Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Classics Top 5 Reasons You Can't Blame, a series that takes a fresh look at sports personalities who are remembered largely for their mistakes, controversial moments, or questionable decisions. Tonight's subject, Charles Barkley. In the 1990s, family values became a social battle cry for those who would tell us what to watch on television, who to look up to, and what our expectations should be of public figures. Enter Barkley. The NBA's king of colorful and off-color sound bites was at his professional peak when a Nike commercial debuted in May of 1993. I am not a role model, insisted Sir Charles. His refusal to bear the responsibility of others' behavior cast him as the flag bearer of the selfish modern athlete. Let's take a look at the static Barkley created. Oh, that ESPN news. Y'all still trying to rip people off with that old station, aren't you? The image that he practiced was the bad boy. He was living life as a kid in the back of his room making farting sounds. I'm good at this game. I was with Barkley in the, uh, the Olympic, Olympic trials, and Bobby Knight was the head coach at the time. Nobody else was joking around. And here come Barkley joking around as usual. Barkley didn't make that Olympic team, and, and he should have. You know, Knight didn't want him on that team because he was so disruptive. Charles trash talk so everybody could hear it, you know, so the people in the front row could hear and laugh, so the officials could smile, so the players, so the other coach could laugh. I love when he told his grandmother, who raised him, that he had become a Republican. And she said, Charles, um, you know, how can you be a Republican? The Republicans are for the rich people. And he said, you know, Grandma, I'm rich. Charles, what do you think about the decertification of the players' union? Get what's best for the players. Screw the owner. Charles' openness, as, as great a boon as it was for the media uh, and for fans, got him into trouble in a lot of situations. He came in as almost like the new breed of, of black athlete that would speak his mind and also do his thing on the floor. I'll dunk on you, go full court, and swing on the rim even. In 1984, Barkley barged into the NBA with the 76ers and over the next eight years established himself as a premier player while wearing out his welcome in the city of brotherly love. Dealt to Phoenix in June of 1992, following a row with Philadelphia's front office, the undersized power forward with the oversized mouth lit up the West with an MVP season. Him and I are exactly the same height, about six, four and a half. What he did at that height and dominate games was absolutely spectacular. I mean, he defended Shaq one-on-one -on -one in the post when we needed him down the stretch of games. Charles just willed that team to victory. During the 1993 playoffs, Barkley touched a national nerve when he appeared in a Nike commercial that broke with American sports tradition. I am not a role model. I'm not paid to be a role model. I'm paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Parents should be role models. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. If it had come from someone else, it probably would not have had the same effect. But the fact that it was Charles, known for saying anything and everything whenever he wanted, uh, had an even greater impact because whenever Charles opened his mouth, people listened. When I first went to Nike with the idea, I knew it was going to start a major controversy. He didn't give a shit. You know, I'm gonna just, this is me, and you like it, if you don't, the hell with you. People butchered the commercial, but they, 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 as my girl judged you to say, they hear, but they don't listen. I just don't think he cared. I just think he thought, whatever, you know, I'm going to say what I feel, and if people don't like it, you know, too bad. It certainly was not a positive thing for the league. Uh, in retrospect, if the league had, had control over it, the league would never have let anything like that happen. It was by far the biggest reaction that I had gotten in my tenure at Nike. The phones were flooded. 
Um, you know, our PR department was working night and day. The press covered it big. This was a very uh, controversial statement. As Nike was bombarded with complaints from angry parents, opinions flew fast and furious in the national media, including one authored by NBA All-Star Carl Malone. At the grassroots level, teachers were poised to wrap Sir Charles's knuckles. He just doesn't get it because there, there are so many single parent uh, families uh, looking for help in raising their kids, looking for an example that did make me angry. It's so interesting that Charles Barkley caused such an uproar, and he even did it in a commercial. It's not even as if he did it in some presidential press conference. In terms of sports, there's no denying whether you want to do a Nike commercial about it or not. You're a role model. You just are. Okay. Sports are so important uh, in America, and that's just part of it. And Charles always had a problem with understanding that or not wanting to understand it. I'm not paid to be a role model. If he's not a role model, who is? You're also being paid millions of dollars, and children all over America are looking up to you. And what do you mean you're not a role model? As far as role model, Youngsters will extract what they want from every individual that they see. But he should, you know, be trying to lead children in the right way because they're looking up to him. The fact of the matter is, highly visible athletes are role models, whether they want to be or not. It comes with the territory, period. The Barkley commercial was a milestone in the evolving perception of the big-time athlete. Before we count down our top five reasons you can't blame Charles Barkley for saying, I am not a role model, here are a few that didn't make the list. We call them the best of the rest. O.J. Simpson. Prior to his involvement in the trial of the century, the juice was credited as the first black athlete to transcend race on Madison Avenue. Before there was anybody using black athletes to sell shoes or cars or VCRs or anything else, there was O.J. Simpson. He convinced white America that a black man could sell products to white people. There's no question that O.J. Simpson was that first crossover athlete, was that first you know, role model, probably misusing the term at the time. To those who didn't know better, it must have seemed so simple. Play ball, get rich, then get richer by making commercials. Too many boys were saying, well, I've just become a professional athlete. That's what I'm going to do when I grow up. The fact that Charles had an opinion and offered a solution, we thought was a really great thing to put out there for people to talk about. Our other best of the rest, Mean Joe Green. His Have a Coke and a Smile spot in 1979 opened the way for athletes to show more personality in commercials. The Mean Joe Green commercial for Coke took Mean Joe Green put him in a situation where we reveal something else about his personality. Here's this little boy who just so looks up to him, and the only thing that he can give him is this drink to quench his thirst. That kind of idolizing of professional athletes is changed. How does that impact the Nike commercial so many years later? Well, if I'm Nike, I go the opposite way of that commercial, and I create a bit of a buzz. I am not a role model. Dan Quayle, the vice president, was the catalyst for an extremely touchy national colloquy on family values. The reason that the Barclay commercial resonated so widely uh, and controversially was this was a time that the debate over family values was playing out on a national scale. While on the campaign trail in 1992, Quayle used Murphy Brown, a TV character who had a baby out of wedlock, as a prime indicator of what was wrong with America. Candace Bergen, who portrayed Brown, won an Emmy despite, or perhaps because of, the hard knocks from the right. A character who supposedly epitomizes today's intelligent, highly paid professional woman, mocking the importance of fathers by bearing a child alone and calling it just another lifestyle choice. One sentence on Murphy Brown, and it came to define him pretty much for the next year. Was it a mistake for Murphy Brown to portray an unwed mother? I, I told you, show? you must have missed what I said. I said I've just taken the last Murphy Brown question. 
this speech that he gave, it was just days after there were huge riots out in Los Angeles. In the wake of the riots in, in L.A. after the Rodney King beating, Coyle happened to mention people were rioting because they lacked personal responsibility, they lacked father figures, proper role models, and there were too many single mothers who were overwhelmed. And Coyle was uh, beating this drum, and uh, he used the Murphy Brown sitcom as a negative example. There is nothing more sensitive than appearing to be telling somebody else how to raise their kids. I welcome the debate with Hollywood. Parents should be role models. These are important messages for us to get out, but we have to be very careful on how we frame them. Somebody might be correct, but if the public perceives them in a certain way, the message will get lost by what people think of the messenger. I think we should give credit to Dan Quayle and to Charles Barkley for bringing those issues to the surface. Are you starting to change your thinking? Maybe reason number four will help. Parents are passing the buck. Go on and talk to your mom, your dad, or both of them. It is OK for young people to look up to athletes. However, it's also important to note that this does not let parents and other non-family adults off the hook. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. I have been baffled ever since he said it at people's failure to understand it and at people's consistent misinterpreting of it. I don't want to raise your kids, you know, I'm not a role model. What he was saying was take responsibility for your own children, you know, I'm not your daddy. Between 1965 and 1995, working Americans gained six hours of leisure time per week, almost all of which they spent watching TV. Meanwhile, parents were spending less time with their children. So I talked to one father and I said, you absolutely must make sure that your child spends more time reading. He said, I tell my child he has to go read and he said, it's like punishment. I tell him he has to read for an hour and I have to keep checking on him. And I said, well, while your child is reading, what are you doing? He said, I'm watching TV. What Barkley said was that you as parents, as teachers, as coaches, are abdicating your responsibility to some guy like me to raise your children. The same way, you know, you're putting them right in front of television sets, you know, and letting Tony the Tiger tell them what to eat. Well, that's crazy. Barkley said what everybody ought to be saying. Don't wait for a professional athlete to mentor your child because he or she is a celebrity. He got this before anybody else. I thought then, and I still think it's one of the single smartest things anybody ever said. In 30 seconds or whatever it was, you, you couldn't get all that. They, you, you couldn't get the whole thing that he was talking about. He was trying to do something, then he got burned, and it's a shame. Nike. It carried the message that put Barkley on the hot seat. Nike, they've been terrific for me. Think about it, television is really the only way you can become bigger. No matter how good you are, if you're not on TV all the time, people are not even going to know who you are. I thought it was Charles and Nike being Charles and Nike, and it was provocative. It got people thinking. Anytime you work with Charles, he likes to hold court on a variety of subjects. And one time he talked about that at another shoot, about that he wasn't a role model. So he said, well, you know what? Let's just take that idea, clean up the language a little bit, and turn it into an ad. I am not a role model. Nike's rise to market dominance was spurred in large part by a brilliantly conceived and executed commercial campaign that fostered the personal side of athletes. We were creating a, an unplugged style campaign. This was stripping it all down and, and, and you know, shot in black and white and um, getting really deep into the personalities of the athletes and what they thought. Were they surprised by the impact of this commercial? They may say they were, but look how they filmed it. Stark, gritty, black and white. Now, come on. They knew exactly what he was going to say and what kind of a controversy it would cause. And controversy sells. This was a big deal. What we loved about it at Nike was the fact that this was a controversial issue, a heated issue. Parents should be role models. Nike does 
deserve credit for taking itself to task by having one of its heroes challenge the artificial hero syndrome. I think that role model ad is the best Charles ad, if not one of the best Nike ads we ever did. I am not a role model. If you haven't bought into our argument yet, maybe this next reason will convince you. Reason number two, don't be like Mike. I already heard you say you're going to beat me to death. Well, the NBA sent us a rule today that says anytime we foul it by delivering it too hard, we're going to get ejected from the game so you're safe. Good. While millions worshipped Michael Jordan's good guy persona, Barkley had little choice but to don the black hat, which turned out to be a perfect fit. We always felt like that there was a market for both. Uh, Charles... Charles's image was was completely different than Michael's. Charles was a was a power tap force. I'm paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Where Michael was more of a finesse in the air, floating and so forth. A whole generation of basketball players has grown up trying to be like Mike in every way. He said I didn't ask to be a role model. He told me in one interview, but I know that I am one, and I'm going to live up to it. If Jordan lived up to it by keeping his political and social opinions under wraps, Barkley spoke out on anything and everything. He was the anti-Jordan in a lot of ways, because as Jordan practiced hard and set a model for his teammates, Barkley did the opposite all the time. He was a kid who never grew up. You know, he was Peter Pan in the NBA with a dirty mouth. He still has a lot of charisma. He's still, you know, an entertaining person. What do you guys anticipate most about working with Charles? A round mound of rebound. <laughs> I think you want to be associated with that, all those positive qualities. And there's also the element of the bad boy. You know, why does Dennis Rodman have so many endorsements over the course of his career? You know, people like that, that anti-hero also. I think the people here are so, so fickle, so, so fake in America. It's ridiculous. I mean, if you said today that you're not a role model, people say, oh, okay, great. They won't even break an eye about it. In 1994, a year after Barkley proclaimed he was nobody's role model, Forbes magazine ranked him 13th in annual income among all athletes and third in the NBA. We positioned Charles again as a character. I mean, yeah, you know, if you had, if you had Michael in, in the penthouse suite, maybe Charles was on a lower floor. Popular thought and belief at that time was that, all right, here's heaven in Michael Jordan. We have to create a hell because everybody's not gonna get to heaven. So Charles Barkley, they painted him as hell. All right, here's the other end of that. You know, be like Mike, I'm not a role model. And it worked because you, now you have everybody covered. He really wasn't a role model. You ever been to jail? No, I have. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Although many fans believed Barkley's candor made him one of the NBA's most lovable players, Sir Charles's behavior occasionally backed up his claim. I am not a role model. You sit there saying, how dare you say that? How dare you? And I'm like, what's wrong with that? He's not a role model. My idol a lot of times is Charles Barkley. I wish I could say what he says. <laughs> Although you want to say it, it's not the right thing to do. Charles Barkley will be questioned by police in Scottsdale, Arizona, following a late-night fight inside a bar in which Barkley reportedly punched a man in the face. He may go to a bar, and he won't back away. If somebody says something ignorant, he'll respond just like a normal person would respond. If somebody throw a drink on me, I'm going to defend myself. I think being famous and being a role model are two different things. Being good at a three-point shot doesn't make you a role model. Barkley was advised to, shall we say, make lifestyle adjustments so incidents like throwing a person through a window, no matter who is at fault, does not happen again. Kevin Johnson is a great human being, and KJ and Charles were like oil and water. There's a story of Charles saying, KJ, come to the strip club with me, and I'll go to church with you on Sunday. And, you know, KJ fulfilled his end of the bargain, and Charles said, no, I'm not going to church. How much money have I lost in gambling? Probably 10 million. He did stupid things and he said stupid things, but you could forgive Charles Barkley for his behavior because he was approachable, he was always personable, a guy that was not caught up in being an NBA star. I am 
I'm not a role model. Most intelligent people watching this should have been saying to themselves, he's right. He's absolutely 100% right. Charles was correct. He says what he believes. He's not being phony, he's just saying what he believes in, uh, what he's about, and if people don't like it, well, he doesn't really care. If you're still undecided on this issue, you're not alone. Appearing on The Tonight Show at the start of the 2005 NBA season, Barkley himself told Jay Leno he fully supported the NBA's strict new dress code. Said Barkley, too many players have lost sight of the fact that they are the caretakers of the game. I'm Brian Ketty. Thanks for watching.